Hello, and welcome back to the Prophet of Prophet show. I am your host, the Prophet of Prophet. You can find me at hitthebid.com and easily log into our broadcast on a daily basis by hitting the big green button on the website. Do it. Do it now. This morning, folks, I'd like to talk to you about a little history of my career on Wall Street. Now, we've had this conversation, but maybe you're witnessing this for the first time. A career that has seen many ups and downs, but right now we are on the up climb. A struggle, a battle, yes. And I have learned by trials and tribulations on how to navigate this wonderful world of the stock market. Of course, everyone's feeling like a genius right now when all you need to do is buy stocks and watch them go up. Keep your head in the sand and wake up and you're up 20%. Find a stock that stops going down and buy it and watch it go up to the heavens. Nine out of 10 stocks are rallying like you've never seen before. Unless you've been trading as long as I have because we've seen this before. 1999 and 2000. And some say this will end like that. I, on the other hand, believe this is something new. And usually when you hear, this time is different, this is something different, this time it's gonna be different, usually those words are just complete and utter failures. But my friends, this time it is different. This time we are seeing stocks going up because they are legitimately coming back. New businesses being formed, money being made. These are not companies with four employees with no chance of ever turning a profit. We're in a different environment right now, but let's pull it back and take the history lesson, okay? Now, over the last year and a half, we've built a portfolio for some of our people that just didn't want to trade, but they wanted to be in certain stocks to enjoy the rally that they thought they'd missed in 09 and 10 and 11. And I said, if you need to buy some stocks right now, you need to go find stocks that haven't come back yet. Stocks that have gotten beaten up that people don't like anymore. Stocks that people just don't want to own. Because if you have a long-term perspective, you probably will be rewarded. Now, our first play was the Google. When Apple was all the rage, we still owned Google. Long-suffering Google owners buying it at 500, waiting to see this thing finally get past 600, 620. And then we believed if it ever did break 620, we would finally see this stock get up to its all time highs and become the champion that it is. We've always liked Google more than Apple. And we thought if Apple was ever to stumble, Google would be there to take the gauntlet. And so far, my one guy, and you know who you are, you've been rewarded very handsomely. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Not everybody can afford. Not everybody can afford to buy the Google. So we suggested why not look at some beaten down stocks, some first solar FSLR at around $18, because I know that's your cost average. And then that day where GMCR was cratering in the aftermarket and hit $15, and we got some at 18, and then the next day we bought some more at 20. You still got that one too. And then the shoe company that we made fun of that was just a fad, but at one point it was down to 28 bucks. And I told you that story about the two beautiful teenage girls, very excited about getting their Uggs, my wife buying her Uggs, my child getting her Uggs. And Warren Buffett has taught us, if anything, to buy what you know. So there at $30, we got back involved in the deck. And I know you still own that one. Now, there's one stock that's been all the rage as of late. And we're not going to talk about Netflix because that was one that we let go. We had no idea how to value this company, whether they were going out of business. We didn't know if they were worth $4. We didn't know if they were worth $300. But you know what? The real magic trade, the magic stock of the year has been Tesla. At 28 bucks, we thought this might be a decent trade. Coming off those lows, maybe this thing could get back to 30. We've been reading that, the year, that their company has been in a turnaround. We really liked 
what we read about Mr. Musk and his rocket ships to space and all the great things he's been involved in. And another thing that you've learned in this industry is follow the smart money, but more importantly, follow the CEO who seems to know what he's doing. So we had faith in the Tesla and we bought more as it went up. And you questioned me, why would I buy more of a stock that normally you would take profits on? And I said, this one looks like it could get to 40, maybe even $50 by the end of 2013. So we bought more from 28, from 30 and 33, but sadly, I sold most of mine at 40, but I know you still have yours. Now all these fantastic trades, Tesla at a cost average of 33, that's trading at 69. First solar with a cost average of around 22, that's trading at 47. GMCR with a cost average of around 26, 27 right now, that's trading at $79. Now, of course, I have to admit, I thought US Steel would have been part of this recovery, and that stock has utterly failed. But you know what? When we owned it at 28, we said if it ever does break 22.50, we're gonna sell it. So we saved a little money and we sold out of the US Steel. But you know what? We bought US Steel back just a couple of weeks ago at around 1885. And I know you still own that one too. But the most important thing of this conversation is none of this matters to you. Does it matter that I took a $3,000 account and turned it into 20 grand? No. Does it matter that I took a $100,000 account and blew it in three months? No. Does it matter that I took a $35,000 account and turned it into $1 million in a year and a half? Absolutely not. Because the only thing that should matter to you is what can I do for you today? And how am I gonna profit going into the future? Because obviously, you're not buying stocks that were 20 bucks that are trading at $70 right now. The question is actually, do we sell? And I know you're wondering that, my one friend who owns all the stocks that I've been talking about. And yes, it is time to take some money off the table on the Tesla and the GMCR. I still believe First Solar is going to be an $80 stock, so we're hanging with that one. I would not buy Netflix right now, even though this stock is being Netflixed, as the term shall be. And as 2013 proceeds, you will see how people will start saying, I hope my stock gets Netflixed. Hopefully, people start saying, I hope my stock becomes First solar or my stock becomes GMCR'd. But for now, I hope my stock becomes Netflixed. Now, we're at a peculiar point in the market. Some say we've come too far too fast. Some say there's a crash imminently coming. The smart money, three months ago, was telling us that they were selling their stocks. The smart money and the hedge fund managers we're taking profits and getting out of the market. Tech was weak. There were signs of an impending doom. So we've thrown everything at this market and the list was a long list. Syst systemic risk, Greek bailouts. Who remembers the fiscal cliff? Weren't those heady days? How about that sequester? Now, we thought maybe if they threw some terrorism in there, that would shake the markets. But since the Boston attacks, we've rallied pretty much every day. Now, I know we don't want to get political right here, but is anybody giving Obama and the Democrats any credit for a market that's rallied pretty much straight up since they've taken power? Of course not, right? You don't want to give Obama any credit for any of this. But if something does go wrong, I'm sure you're out there ready to blame them. But that's okay. It's okay, we're talking about the now. So a few weeks ago I talked about what can we do now? And I blessed you with AMD. Now AMD, sure I read a story about how their number, how their chips could be put into some of their gaming consoles, but that's not why we were in it. We were in it prior to that. All 2013 has shown us is that as soon as a stock finds a bottom, you can expect 90% of the time, and this is an accurate figure, if you take a look at some of the stocks we've been talking about, the CRUS, C-R-U-S as of late, the Mellanox, M-L-N-X as of late, even the Walter Energy, 
the U.S. Steel, and of course the AMD. And I'm probably forgetting some. But as soon as a stock finds a bottom, and again, we're not picking the bottom, we're seeing the bottom. It's a stock that hits a low, and then for about three or four days, attempts to break that low, but cannot go down. Therefore, showing us that the sellers might finally be done. And 2013, when the sellers are done, what happens? First, we have the short squeeze. Then we have new money coming into the stock, and then the shorts start to get a little bit more panicky and start to squeeze the stock some more. And next thing you know, you sometimes develop into a recovery, like the first solar, like the list of stocks we've talked about. But again, now we've gone on 11 minutes here, and I know your attention span probably faded way, way, way long ago. But if you're still here, here's what I want you to do. Go to hitthebid.com. There's a big green button on the screen. Hit the green button, take your free trial, and come listen to what I have to say on a daily basis. Because what we do on a daily basis, we trade the market from around 9.45 to about 11.30, where the magic usually is. And we try to generate some income on a daily basis. But in a bull market, generally, what we're looking for are stocks. And don't forget about the AIG that we still own at 28 bucks. I know you still own that one, too. What we try to find are stocks that are finding that bottom, whether it be for the day, the, the week, the month. And we try to trade to generate some income in the morning. And then we go on and look for what we think could be good for the next day. Because my style of trading generally only works well between 9.45 and let's stretch it to noon. After that, the afternoon trading is really not my thing. And you know what? I'd rather be doing something else. For instance, yesterday we made a quick $400 on DDD. We shorted the DDD in the morning. We made some money. And you know what? Making $440 in a matter of six or seven minutes, that's a job that most people would kill for. But we continued to trade and we chopped and churned and we got beat up a little bit by over trading. And again, you do fall into pitfalls while you're sitting at the desk because you want to do more if you're sitting there. All right, let's take it in for a second. If you want to come hang out with me and my crew, just go hit that green button and I'm sure you're going to enjoy yourself. Now later on in the day I want to show you something that we've been working on behind the scenes. As you know I've always wanted to be on the TV. For some reason I am blacklisted from CNBC because I figured at this point I'd be invited on their show from time to time to ask me why? Why did I love GMCR at 18 bucks? What made me want to own First Solar at $20? How come I love Tesla at 28 bucks? Why did I buy AMD? at $2.30. So if you do love me out there, and I know there are still a few lovers out there, why not email CNBC? Go find an email address or a Twitter address and get the profit of profit on CNBC. But later on in the afternoon, I'm going to show you what we've been working on. Obviously, I've been trying to get a TV show going and we, formed, we, we filmed the pilot. We had a whole bunch of my crew come down. We filmed a whole bunch of stuff. So look out for that later in the afternoon. And hopefully I'll see you in the room. Hopefully we make some money. And remember, if you come in there and there's just music playing and there's nothing going on, that's because we've already made money. And I need to lead by example. So sometimes I just put the music on and I encourage people to just chill. And we do come back later in the afternoon. But sometimes between 12 and 2, I like to call it club hours. We're out snoozing. We're out doing other things. We're walking around. The weather's nice. You don't have to sit at the computer all day. All right, guys, God bless you. May all of your hopes and dreams come true and go hug someone you love.